Perfect. So if you, again, are new to um, these live sessions, these are something that I did in the lounge with the lounge group. Um, welcome, you're in for a treat. It's a really, really great opportunity to chat, spend some time painting together. I was inspired to um, create this opportunity for us to paint together based on just the space that I'm making in my own daily practice and my own personal goals for painting. And I realized that sometimes we need to come together and really enjoy being creative in a group. Um, I can offer you a little bit more instruction and maybe answer some questions as we go. But I think it's really helpful to see um, my own personal process that maybe I don't share as much on social media or through the classes that I'm hoping will inspire you as most of us now are in, oh, I have to let my dog through my little door. Give me one sec. Sorry about that. He thought he was coming in for love and realized I was working. Um, just through the process of um, you going on vacations now, maybe traveling a bit more, maybe taking more photos and finding more opportunities to paint. So whether you're again, traveling or just oh, having time off oh, work. I, I thought you were getting coffee. And from your, I'm just gonna mute everyone again. And just from oh, your, yeah, um, regular routine, I want you to find moments that you can connect with your art, connect with your watercolor and make it easy. So I think sometimes too, you're just not knowing what to paint or going through the process of figuring that out can sometimes be distracting. So I'm going to show you a few of my sketchbooks and pages that aren't necessarily beautiful, aren't my best work to show you that it's okay just to put brush to paper and paint something. And then as you would have received through email and on the Facebook um, group that I posted, here's a photo from my recent trip to Italy. It was magical. If Italy um, isn't on your bucket list, I suggest it. It was a dream trip. This is from a little town. I'm going to ruin the word. I think it was San Gin, Ginem. I can't even say it. <laughs> I'll put it in the chat. Um, but it was magical in the sense that we walk through these narrow, narrow streets where people actually sort of live in these buildings and these narrow corridors. And then you just see this bright, beautiful passage at the end um, of the views of Tuscany and it was breathtaking. So I have dedicated a sketchbook to my travels and my goal is to complete a sketchbook of just images from Italy, which I'll show you. Um, and I don't do this for every sketchbook, but a sketchbook is a really great way um, to, again, maybe create a little bit more of a consistent practice, but allowing yourself room to just create. So removing the idea that I um, have to paint a beautiful finished piece that is immaculate or um, just remove the expectations of the final goal of your painting and instead just enjoy looking at imagery that speaks to you, that creates a memory, that makes you feel or uplifts you a little bit so that those moments that you take to paint are really just for you. There, you don't have to share them. I want you to share them in the group if you can. Um, you don't have to share them necessarily, but again, looking, I think at my process, this is something I do every morning with my morning coffee. That's why I scheduled it early. My morning actually starts at 6.30 a.m., but I thought that was a little bit too early for us to start. But those moments where I have the house is quiet. I have my morning coffee, my sketchbook. I know what I'm going to paint. I can just get right into painting and I'm not worried about what the painting looks like. So some of them are incomplete. Some of them maybe aren't my best work, but the fact that I was able to sit down and, and practice was where that joy and experience is that I want you all to experience and explore today. Okay. So I'm just going to check in with everyone, make sure everyone is doing okay. Marta. So here is my desk view. Everyone can see it. Okay. This is what I'm going to paint with you, sketch and paint with you today. I'm going to do it very loose and rough and maybe even work on it over the next few days. If you don't wanna paint this photo with me, pick something else. Or if you're finding you want to just watch and you're not able to follow along because maybe I'm going a bit too fast, we're all at different experiences at this point because as we're opening this to um, beginner students, maybe students who are advanced, students who have taken landscapes with me. So it's okay, I don't want you to feel the pressure to paint alongside me. If you don't like the imagery, remember, paint what you love using colors that you love. Okay, so here's my sketchbook from Italy. You've seen parts of it. I just took all of our little tickets and receipts from our travels as inspiration. 
And again, through the trip, I thought I was going to paint daily there, but we were so busy, I didn't get a chance to. But what I did do was sketch down imagery that spoke to me during the trip. And I used my photos on my phone as my reference point, because I knew that I could always go back and tweak if I wanted to add some detail. I posted yesterday, and if you got my newsletter, I talked about the wildflowers or the wild poppies that just grow on the side of the road. I can't tell you how many times I asked my husband to stop um, so that I could pick them. I actually painted this one over a few painting sessions because I found that as I started to add in a little bit more depth, I really loved how that door came to life that was in uh, Rome, just in Trust Every, which is nice. And then you can see here, I was just playing around with some new materials that I got. Every page doesn't have to be a complete painting because the practice not only obviously gives you the practice of putting brush to paper, but you're also able then to maybe mix some colors and play around with some imagery that maybe you want to explore more of down the road. Okay, so again, I just took bits of imagery and scrolls, things like that, that I saw in architecture. That was really great practice. I actually really loved painting these scrolls and playing around with just a limited color palette. And even though this isn't, you know, a fully composed finished page, if I take away the distraction of what's beside it, it's kind of neat. And I know will inspire me maybe in some of my abstract work even, but even looking at the colors, it'll inspire another painting for sure. Okay, so use your sketchbook practice as one that um, you can refer back to for inspiration and just to play around. So here's another one and I wanted to show you, I really loved, I think I did this during one of our lounge um, painting sessions, but it's neutral tint and turquoise and I really loved the color that I got from mixing those two. So I wanted to remember that to keep that um, by my side so I could use it to paint again. So here's one that I did just recently. This again is um, driving through Tuscany, but I didn't want it to be literal. I really just wanted to capture um, the sky. I loved the clouds across the horizon there. And I wanted to, the photo doesn't do it justice, but the sun was just shining on parts of the grass that looked beautiful. So when you're working in your sketchbook, they don't have to be finished, again, fully composed um, pieces. I want you to use the sketchbook and opportunity to paint um, loosely and to really enjoy your summer travels and working on your watercolor paintings. Okay, so I'm going to start up here to lay down that sky. And when you're working in a sketchbook, I'm going to encourage you not to feel like you have to fill in every single spot, like make it feel um, a little bit rough. You want it to feel sketchy and almost like a sneak peek into your own personal artist journal or sketchbook. So I don't, I'm not going to worry about getting right up to the top. I'm actually gonna zoom in a little bit too so you can see before I lose that. But there we go, is that good? And then I'll take my tissue and I'll start just picking up a bit of the clouds. I really want the sky to feel um, really light. We didn't have a lot of great weather on this trip, unfortunately, in Tuscany especially, uh, which was too bad. Oh, and I'm just going to go across here a little bit. So um, anytime we had beautiful days like this, I made sure to take lots of photos because I knew that coming home, I'd want to paint more. So while my first layer is still really nice and wet, I'm just going in and dropping in a little bit of that cerulean blue, kind of around where my tissue picked up some of that paint. Okay, and I'll just go to the top here of my page too and really accentuate. Sometimes the sky is a little bit darker above, like you can see in this photo here that I painted. And then where the clouds are, it's a bit lighter but I almost want to deepen the clouds there a slight bit. So my cerulean blue is all used up. Let's see what's, this is Prussian blue that I've got here. So let's go ahead and add just ever so slightly. And someone was asking about hard lines when we were just starting the live. 
Um, so if you're experiencing hard lines and you don't want the hard edge that dried, just as your brush stroke is still wet, I'm using a dry brush. I have a paper towel next to me and I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that paint so that I don't get that hard edge finish, okay? And just blending it out a slight bit. And we'll do the same thing on this side. I can go ahead and start to add in, taking a tiny, tiny bit. I'm just going into the actual um, paint that I dispensed. Look at my piece here. I see there's a little bit of a shadow in here. So I can put that in. And I've got a little bit of a shadow up top here. So again, just a darker value or more concentrated brush stroke can start to bring that in. They are stones and it's weathered. So remember, our goal isn't to replicate what we see in the photo. We want to create that narrow passage, which is starting to come together really nicely here. And then even across this way, I might need a smaller brush for this. And I can do the same here. So it looks like a really nice sharp edge to create that little peak hole. So that's how you would get your wine, like back in the Middle Ages, that's how you would get your, not moonshine, but wine that was maybe illegally produced. We learned so much while we were traveling. There was, like I said, just a fantastic opportunity. There's a little hole here that I can go ahead and bring in. So see how these little details, they don't have to be um, fussy. Now I'm gonna go across here actually, because I can see the top of that ledge has a nice shadow. So I'm just, and again, I can wash off my brush. So if you look at um, maybe anchor points that you're drawn to and start to pop those in, it'll start to bring your sketch to life. So even looking at the contrast of our darker value and the sky, um, is really drawing me in. I'm just going to paint this little guy in there. And I think I'll grab my burnt sienna for it. So when you're using a dry palette, I like to use the side of my brush. So I have a bit of water on my brush and to preserve that tip, I'm just using the side of my brush to wake up my dry palette. So I can get that nice creamy consistency. And then you can go to um, your mixing palette. I don't have a lot of room here. Let's go ahead and use this section. So I can just take off that excess. And just in here, I can almost see the red of the bricks. Maybe this was built at a different time and they had access to different material. But I can draw in that burnt sienna just really easily there and then accentuate this. And I'm looking at my image here. So I'm just going to go across here where it is the darkest. Let it touch that edge of the um, wall here. I see I have a nice light spot just around that corner. So as I'm drawing in the paint, I'm observing that. So I'm going to encourage that paint to come through. I dabbed off my brush in the water. So my brush is really wet. I'm going to make sure again, just in the water again, and I'm going to lighten this section. So if I look at my photo, I see that there is a shadow here that I'm going to accentuate by just moving my water puddle that's very watery across the page down to my bottom of my journal. So again, I'm going to clean off my brush, dry it off a slight bit, and I just want to remove a little bit more of that paint so that I can accentuate that nice dark shadow there. So again, picking up a little bit more of this Payne's Gray, just going to blend it off, wipe it off. And while my piece is still wet, I can then go in with another layer, a little bit more, I took too much off, just while it's still wet. So wet on wet, I'm going to define that edge, even come down this way a little bit, really nice and dark. And I can see here, just on the edge here, it starts to look a bit shadowed. And then here's where the floor is a bit interesting. So 
I'm just going to do lines to make it look like it's cobblestone. So not too fussy. And I'm not going to bother with all of this here. Maybe in here we can break it up a slight bit so the edge isn't so clean. But just in that front area, we can bring in a little bit of that depth. And then see, because we kept this area light, so imagine the lights coming in through our light source here, which is through that corridor, that's going to be really nice and bright. So when you're putting in your darker value here, you've got that shadowing, so it looks like your corner is turning. Okay, and then maybe even with a bit of that Payne's Gray, just at the top of the ledge here, and just, the time that I have in the mornings to paint. And that's what I usually give myself to work on a sketchbook. So it doesn't have to be fussy. It maybe doesn't feel finished um, or it does feel finished. But at this point I have it in my sketchbook. So I'm able to then look at that sketchbook the next day or a week down the road um, or even months down the road. And I know that I can go back to it. I have my photo reference and I can add more to it if I choose. And I think it's a really great way to also keep track of um, your process, your how much you've grown. I'm gonna go ahead and add me as a spotlight so I can talk to you. Um, it really allows you a chance to look back at maybe practices that you worked on that you probably struggled with as you were working out how you were approaching painting or maybe you're working on an aspect of your own um, skills. And so when you look back, that's the reminder of how far you've come with your practice and how much you've learned over that time. So I think that is really great to be able to work in a sketchbook. Okay, so that demo part is done. I'm glad Donna, and again, if this was your first time, I am really glad you're able to join. If you have painted with me in the past and you're coming back, I'm so happy that you're able to come back and join with me too. Yes, and remember, you can watch and rewatch. And if my imagery doesn't speak to you, Take a photo that you have had um, in your phone that maybe you wanted to paint but don't know how to approach and then try to break it down and simplify it and really paint the energy of what you're seeing, maybe the memory of what you're seeing or the elements that can draw you in because it's not a complicated painting, but I think it's really effective with um, taking you through that, that corridor and exploring that town and as I'm talking about the experience, I'm hoping that, again, you're feeling that experience with me so that you're able to emulate that in your painting, okay?